Hello and welcome to our program, Where God Weeps, a program where we talk about the situation of the suffering church around the world. Today it is my great privilege to be speaking with Magda Volnig, journalist, film director and member of the Saint Egidio community. Magda has just returned from Mozambique, a country which emerged from a civil war in 1975 and since that time the economy has been growing strongly. Yet, more than 50% of the population live on less than one dollar a day. Poverty breeds crime. And Magda's film, I Was in Prison, takes us inside one of Mozambique's prisons. We're going to watch now an excerpt of this film and then we'll be speaking with Magda about her impressions and her experiences in a Mozambican prison. The first thing you notice when you enter the prison is the terrible, almost unimaginable stench. The state of the sewers, there are moments when it's like a river flowing. Though the prison was built for 75 inmates, that number is often surpassed and varies from about 100 to 150. I'm married. I have a daughter. I live with six nieces for whom I am responsible. My wife works for the health service. She is a nurse and I'm a teacher. I lead a normal life. In other words, I have a family, quite a large one, five children, two sisters-in-law, two nieces. We're talking about nine people who live with me. Together with friends from the community, we spend the whole of Saturday morning preparing and serving lunch for prisoners, every week, for nearly six years. This is the only penitentiary in the district of Nakala. Each cell houses very many prisoners. There is congestion, there is not enough air. Thirteen prisoners died in another district prison last year exactly for that reason. When one of the prisoners knocked on the cell door to inform the prison guards, they did not respond. A 
assalto de casas nos prédios. Break-ins into neighboring houses, into all sorts of buildings in the area. The most serious crime, which even we questioned, was that someone had stolen a chicken and was imprisoned for years without a judgment. We began pressing the prison board. Listen, it's impossible. Just because he stole a chicken or a mobile phone? The prisoners are of various ages, though predominantly teenagers. We are talking about 13 years old and upwards. Teenagers, the young and adults. We also had a 13-year-old child here. We criticized the fact that it was impossible that, if at all, they should find something more suitable for that child. Though, on the other hand, we met a child imprisoned here with its mother, a two-year-old. That child was in conditions that were beyond belief. Shocking. Why prison visits? We saw them in such inhuman conditions. Barely one meal a day. A way had to be found, including talking about this with the prison board. Lunches, as many as we were capable of guaranteeing, prepared by the community. We had to organize such a service to help the detainees. E vai fazer? Arroz. Arroz com feijão. Com feijão, sim. Misturado com repolho. Ah, com os temperos. Quais são os temperos que vocês têm? Temperos, patada, tomate, pimento, alho. They gather funds, buy food, cook it and serve it to the prisoners. They spend time with the prisoners every Saturday. It's a good sign of hope. Many inmates end up here from afar and so have no relatives living nearby. They need everything, including food. fazer umas coletas dos funcionários para fazer garantir que We organize collections from among those in the community who have work to make sure that the lunch will last. There are about a dozen in the community who have work. The remainder have no work or occupation. But there is no person in the world so poor that cannot help others. There was never a lack of fear, of course, that we will be regarded as those who defend thieves and bandits. People are imprisoned, yet we go to give them food. Why? They are in prison, after all. Suffice that someone has been imprisoned to conclude that they are bad. If bad, then surely it is dangerous to show the prisoner one's face, lest, who knows, on completing his sentence the prisoner might harm you. 
But with time we came to realize that it had little to do with the truth. What we found inside the prison was an atmosphere of goodwill towards our community, in spite of the many possible problems, fear, our age. They nonetheless began to respect us. It was a great joy for all of us. It's not the same place it was five years ago. There is an improving trend. There is also a change among the prisoners themselves. They are pleased when we come. There are moments when they become our friends. From the time we began to work in the prison, the attitude of all the institutions, legal, public prosecutor, police, the courts, their attitude has changed. Though we are not there to supervise their work, we will not hesitate to speak out when we notice that something has not been done properly. We do not defend prisoners for being bandits or thieves. May they receive the punishment they deserve under the law for the wrong they've committed. But they remain human beings who deserve to be treated humanly. They do sense every little good deed that is done in their favor. They feel it. Somebody taught me how to care for the prisoners. The Word of God and the community of Sant'Egidio. I came to know the prison with the community. Having all sorts of matters to attend to, such as the already mentioned large family and work, surely cannot serve as an excuse for not doing anything for others, right? It is written that a faith that is not backed by deeds is no faith at all. There is a very close relationship between prayer and acts carried out by the community. Because one of the first visions that we have is that prayer feeds hope. Prayer inspires people to live decently. It is prayer that opens us to the suffering of others. It is prayer that makes us reach out to people as they are. I know that they await us, they await me. The simple fact of our coming, welcome and communal singing means much for them and for me also. Such is a Christian life, such is the life that all of us Christians are invited to experience, a good experience. In any case, the Word of God. Jesus said, I was in prison and you came to visit me. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was hungry and you fed me. We do the same. We come to visit them in prison.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our program, Where God Weeps. We're here with Magda Volnik, the film director of I Was in Prison, and we're going to be speaking to her now about her impressions and experiences in this Mozambican prison. Magda, thanks for being with us here on our program. Thank you, Mark, for the invitation. Magda, how did you first come to enter into this prison at all? I've met my friends of the community of Santa Gidio in Nakala, being in that city. They invited me to the prayer. I went on this prayer and uh, they began to tell me what do they do, how do they try to serve the poor people in the city. They are serving the poor children, but also they go to the city prison every week for six years and then invited me to go with them simply. At the beginning we wonder without the camera. I just wanted to, to, to see what to do see they what do is, yes. and in fact to assist them to do the same as they do. And uh, of course I was I was tricked very much. I was touched by this by this place, by the uh, by the circumstances uh, in which the prisoners has to live. It came out that we can also enter this prison with a camera, thanks. Which is very unique, because normally it's impossible to enter a film, uh, That's enter true. a crew into it's a prison. It's impossible to enter in the prison with a, with a camera. But thanks to the good relations that the people from this community built uh, uh, for the years, for six years, uh, they had no, no doubts, the director of this prison, to invite us also with the camera and to show this place to show their work as well. Magda, what was your first impression when you entered in? Was it the smell? What was it that struck you first? Of course it was difficult. Uh, I haven't been in places like that place, this prison. Uh, of course it doesn't smell nice, of course it's very dirty. And, uh, but what struck, what struck me mostly is the uh, this is a very small place. Um, three or four cells two or three meter squares. In each of the cells uh, there are 30, 40 people sleeping, living, wow. being in fact uh, stretched, lying one next to the other, next to the other on the floor. There are no means of, uh, there, there's no toilet. In fact, uh, they have to be taken away from the prison, out of the, of the walls uh, to the toilet. There is no fresh air. It's very, it's very difficult to, to live there, to, to survive there. Did it shock you, the conditions? Of course, it shocked me. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's unimaginable, in fact. It's unhuman. Uh, seeing this prison, we Europeans would say that they can stay maybe 10 people, maybe 15, mm. but uh, there were more than 100 people living, staying in this prison, mostly very young people, very young boys. Yes, I noticed in the film that Teenagers that were were very were present and and even mothers with children. Yes, teenagers. They are mostly teenagers, very young people in their twenties, in their thirties, uh, that uh, committed very simple crimes. In fact, uh, some of them has, has has had stolen a chicken, another one a mobile phone, and uh, on that sudden time, their their life became completely different. They were closed in inside of this prison without. Uh, sometimes even the means to, to defend themselves, uh, starving, because that's the, one of the biggest problems in it's the prisoners, it's a lack of food. Mm. They have a food only once a day, once a day. It's, a, it's a very weak food, very, very simple. Mm. And those who do not have a families living nearby who can support them, they are simply starving. I want to... Uh, talk a little bit now about the motivation of the people who try and help, the members of the Santa Gidio community with which you had contact and which brought you to the prison in the first place. Um, why, what was it that inspired them first to help? They told me with a, with, with a, very, in a very humble way, uh, a very simple way, that they just try to, they are trying to, to live their fate. Uh, they are reading in the gospel, I was in prison and you and you go to visit me, you came to visit me, and they said, we are simply do the same what's written in the gospel. We try to visit those who, who are there, who, who are in troubles, who suffer, who are very poor. Even if they are no, not innocent, if they, if they committed a crime, they are still a human beings that, uh, that deserve uh, to be treated as a human beings. 
they also had their fear. I mean, I think when you must have taken your step across the threshold into the prison, you had a sense of fear. But they are working there day to day. How do they manage their fear? At the beginning, they were also, they were of course, afraid. They told me that uh, they, they had the doubts. Uh, but step by step, when they saw that uh, these are normal people, in fact, very young, very, also very afraid. Mm. Uh, and if you, if you give them a, a sense of friendship, if, you, if, if they notice that you, you don't want to harm them, that you want to help them, that you want to give them something good, to bring them food, to, uh, to talk with them, trying to help with, uh, with the lawyers, trying to help with, the, with any other needs, uh, they become also the friends. I want to go a little bit further uh, in this question of the practical help. They, they provide food, they provide legal advice. What else do they do inside the prison? We can remember that those who are helping are also very poor. These are people living in this, in this area, in, in Nakala city. Uh, some of them are very young. Uh, they are pupils, students. Uh, some of them also cannot find their work. Some uh, have uh, very big families. They have to take care of, of their children and uh, children of their families as well, of their nieces. Uh, but they told me that uh, there is nobody so poor who cannot help the other. How are the relationships with the authorities, with the guards in the prison? Is there, is there good cooperation? How have they been received by the authorities? They are trying also to, um, to speak about the problems if they see that something's, that something is uh, um, it's not well done, it's not right. Uh, they, they, are, they have a courage to speak loudly about this. And if the, the, the authorities see uh, that they are looking to help them, that they are looking for, for a good of these people, of these prisoners, they, are, they admire this also and they, are, uh, they allow them to, to, to help. Now I want to change a little bit because we've talked about the practical help, but what about the spiritual help? We saw in the film that there were prayers, there was uh, prayers before the meals, but also singing and joy. What spiritual help uh, do these Sant'Egidio members bring to the prison? They are, they are also trying to help them uh, to survive in this in this place, also in the means of of their uh, psychological health, let's say, of their of the spiritual health, they try to to talk with them. If somebody wants to listen, uh, if somebody wants to take part in the catechesis, they are trying to to provide this. They are they are open to to speak with them about also their faith. And do the prisoners respond? I mean, spiritually, I mean, it's one thing, for example, to say, yes, I'm happy to receive the food, but are they also open to the spiritual food? They are always, uh, I think, asking themselves, why are you coming here? Why, uh, why do you want to help me? Why do you love me? In fact, there are even such a deep questions. Why do you do that? And of course, uh, they, they began to speak that we do this because we believe in God. We do this because we read every day the gospel and uh, in this way begins uh, the talk that is much deeper, uh, that helps also those prisoners to, to change, to, uh, to, to start to ask the questions about their fate, about uh, this, what will happen when they will be free. In the film we saw prayers and catechesis in a little chapel. Um, were there conversions? Are there conversions going on in the in the prison? When they when they go out from the prison, some of them tries to rebuild their life, tries to to begin everything from the from the beginning, and uh, also they want to help the others. They are asking, can we become a member of your community? Can we become a member of of the church? Can we pray with you? Can we also help the others to as we were helped by by you? How would you say this experience in the prison changed you personally? I think that first of all it's difficult to forget these people even if we were, we were there just for a moment. And, but we were really touched by, by this place, by, by these people and of course by those who are helping them. We were impressed that being so poor, having such a difficult life, living in these conditions of the country that is very poor, you can always find a way to help the others. 
And uh, I think that was the, the biggest lesson that nobody is so poor that cannot help the other, that we also can look around and help those who, who are poor among us to help them. What can we do? I think that first of all we can, we can pray for those who are helping the others. We can, uh, we can remember the countries who are far away from us, who suffer, who, who, uh, who has a difficult situation, to be aware of this, what's going on in, this, in these places. And uh, certainly we can, we can help those who are helping them. Uh, for example, helping aid to the church in need, who is helping the church in Mozambique, the priests, but also the lay people, also the communities, to be trained, to have a places for worship, to, to be able to go uh, to the others, to poor people living there, helping them, um, bringing them hope, bringing them the gospel. Magda, thank you very much for having been with us today in our program. Thank you very much, Mark. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having been with us today on our program, Where God Weeps. And if you'd like to know more about the story of Catholics in Mozambique, and in particular the work of the Santa Gidio community there, I would encourage you to look at the contact information at the end of this program. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. <laughs>